Good morning. Welcome to the HD Foundation podcast of stories. I am Nishant Pan, and today I shall be reading a story by Ruskin Bond. The title is The Canal. We love to bathe there on hot summer afternoons. Sushil and Raju and Pitambar and I, and there were others as well, but we were the regulars, the ones. who met at other times too eating at chaat shops or riding on bicycles into the tea gardens the canal has disappeared or rather it has gone underground having been covered over with concrete to widen the road to which it ran parallel for most of its way here and there it went through a couple of large properties and it was at the extremity of one of these just inside the boundaries of miss gamla's house that the canal went into a loop where it was joined by another small canal and this was the best place for bathing or just romping around the smaller boys wore nothing but we wore our underwears on so miss gamla really had nothing to complain about i'm not sure if this was a real name i think we called her miss gamla because of the large number of gamlas or flower pots that surrounded her house they filled the veranda decorated the windows and lined the approach road she had a mali who was always watering the pots and there was no shortage of water the canal being nearby but miss gamla did not like small boys or big boys for that matter she placed us high on a list of pests along with monkeys who raided her kitchen sparrows who shattered her sweet peas and goats who ate her geraniums we did nothing of these things being strictly fun loving creatures but we did make a lot of noise spoiling her afternoon siesta and i think she was offended by the sight of us cavorting on the boundaries of her estate a spinster in her 60s the proximity of boys no matter how immature disturbed and upset her she had a companion a noisy pekinese dog who followed her around everywhere and set up an ear splitting barking at anyone who came near <coughs> it was the barking rather than a play that woke her up in the afternoons and then she would emerge from her back veranda waving a stick at us and shouting at us to be off we would collect our clothes and lurk behind a screen of lantana bushes returning to the canal as soon as lady and dog were back in the house the canal came down from the foothills from a hill called nala pani where a famous battle had taken place 150 years back between the british and the gurkhas but for some quirky reason possibly because we were not very good at history we called it the panipat canal after a more famous battle which was north of delhi we had our own mock battles wrestling on the grassy banks of the canal before plunging into the water it was no more than waist high flailing around with shouts of joy and with no one to hinder our animal spirits except miss kamala down the path she hobbled and she pronounced a limb with a pronounced limb waving her walnut wood walking stick at us while her bulging eyed peck came yapping at her heels <laughs> be off you chokra boys she would shout off off to your filthy homes or i'll put the police on you and on one occasion she did report us to the local thana and a couple of policemen came along told us to get dressed and warned us off the property but the head constable was pitambar's brother-in-law's brother-in-law so the ban did not last for more than a couple of days we were soon back at our favorite stretch of canal when miss gamla saw that we were back as merry and disrespectful as ever she was furious she nearly had a fit when raju danced in front of her wearing nothing 
When Miss Gamla advanced upon him, stick raised, he jumped into the canal. Why don't you join us? shouted Sushil, taunting the enraged woman. Jump in and cool off, I called, not to be outdone in villainy. The little peck ran up and down the banks of the canal, yapping furiously, <laughs> dying to sink its teeth into our bottoms. Miss Gamla came right down to the edge of the canal, waving her stick, trying to connect with any part of Raju's anatomy that could be reached. The ferule of the stick caught him on the shoulder, and he gave a yelp of pain. Ah! Miss Gamla gave a shrill cry of delight. Ha ha ha! She had scored a hit. She made another lunge at Raju, and this time, I caught the end of the stick and pulled. Instead of letting go of the stick, Miss Gamla hung on to it. I should have let go then. But on an impulse, I gave it a short, sharp pull, and to my horror, both walking stick and Miss Gamla tumbled into the canal. Miss Gamla went under for a few seconds, then she came to surface, spluttering, and screamed, "Help! Help!" There was a frenzy of barking from the peck. Hoo, 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 hoo. Why had he been left out of the game? Wisely. He forbore from joining us. We went to the aid of Miss Gamla, with every intention of pulling her out of the canal, but she backed away, screaming, "Get away! Get away from me! Get away, you rowdy boys!" Fortunately, the walking stick had been carried away by the current. Miss Gamla was now in danger of being carried away too. Floundering about, she had backed away to a point. Where a secondary canal joined the first, and here the current was swift. Even the boys, big and small, avoided that spot. It formed a little whirlpool before rushing on. "Mam Sahib, be careful!" shouted Pitambar. "Watch out!" I shouted. "You won't be able to stand against the current." Raju and Sushil lunged forward to help, but with a look of hatred, Miss Gamla turned away. And tried to walk downstream. A surge in the current swept her off her legs. Her gown billowed up, turning her into a sailboat, and she moved slowly downstream, arms flailing as she tried to regain her balance. He scrambled out of the canal and ran along the bank, hoping to overtake her. But we were hindered by the peck, who kept snapping at her heels, and by the fact. That we were without clothes and approaching the busy Dilaram Bazaar. Just before the bazaar, the canal went underground, emerging about two hundred meters further on, at the junction of the old survey road and the East Canal Road. To our horror, we saw Miss Gamla float into the narrow tunnel that carried the canal along its underground journey. If she didn't get stuck somewhere in the channel, she would emerge, hopefully. Still alive, at the other end of the passage, we ran back for our clothes, dressed, then ran through the bazaar and did not stop running until we reached the exit point on the canal road. This must have taken us ten to fifteen minutes. We took up our positions on the culvert where the canal emerged and waited. We waited and waited and waited. No sign of Miss Gamla. She must be stuck somewhere," said Pitambar. "She'll drown," said Sushil. "Not her fault," said Raju. "If we tell anyone, we'll get into trouble. Think, they'll think we have pushed her in. We'll wait a little longer," I said. So we hung about the canal banks, pretending to catch tadpoles and hoping that Miss Gamla would emerge perfectly alive. Her walking stick floated past. We did not touch it. It would be evidence against us," said Pitambar. The dog had gone home after seeing his mistress disappear down the tunnel. Like Alice, I thought only that was a dream. When it grew dark, we went our different ways, resolving not to mention the episode to anyone. We might be accused of murder. By now, we felt like murderers. A week passed and nothing happened. No bloated body was found. Floating in the lower reaches of the canal, 
no maim sahib was reported missing they say the guilty always return to the scene of the crime more out of curiosity than guilt we came together one afternoon just before the rains broke and crept through the shrubbery behind miss gamla's house all was silent all was still no one was playing in the canal the mango trees were unattended no one touched miss gamla's mangoes Trespassers were more afraid of her than of a lati wielding mali. We crept out of the bushes and advanced towards the cool, welcoming weather flowing past us. And then came a shout from the house: "Scoundrels! Gundas! Chokra boys! I'll catch you this time!" And there stood Miss Gamla, tall and menacing, alive and well, flourishing a brand new walking stick and advancing down her steps. "It's a ghost!" said raju no she's real said sushil must have got out of the canal somewhere and somehow well at least we aren't murderers said pitambar no i said but she'll murder us if we stand here any longer miss gamla had been joined by her mali the yelping peck <laughs> and a couple of other retainers let's go said raju we fled the scene and we never went there again Miss Kamla had won the battle of Panipat. I hope you enjoyed the story. I'll continue reading more stories to you. Thank you.